Well, I think we all realize that something strange is going on with the oceans when those creepy creatures start popping up. A fish with a long, bony stick growing out of its head. A creature that looks like a pulsing pile of spaghetti. A white shrimp the size of an adult's palm. A toothy fish with glowing ribs. A huge sea beetle the size of a cat. A purple jellyfish that looks like lava. Some people call them monsters. Some are sure they come from another planet. Fortunately, scientists quickly calm people down. These creatures are inhabitants of the deepest parts of the sea and have always lived here. Something's forced them to come to the surface. In the Atlantic Ocean, off the coast of Antarctica, a research ship gets into trouble. A block of ice breaks off from a large iceberg and falls onto the deck of the ship. Severe frost, icy water, an impending storm – there's almost no chance of salvation. Waiting for rescuers is impossible. It'd be days before they're found. Several crew members fall overboard and find the water is… Ah, that's weird. The water's warm. Thanks to this, the crew manages to hold out much longer. And they get rescued after all. Hmm… All the oceans begin to warm up. Normally, water's heated very slowly from the outside, from the sun, greenhouse gases, you know, that sort of thing. Even a tiny increase in temperature means big problems. Now, the ocean is heating up quickly and from the inside, from the bottom. Scientists send down one of those deep water research things, which can handle high temperatures and pressure. The deeper down it goes, the fewer living organisms they see swimming around. Almost at the bottom, the water becomes very hot. Scientists spot a crack in the Earth's crust. It's like a volcano, only flat. The hot energy of the Earth's core spills out and heats the ocean. Life down there quickly becomes impossible, so all the deep-sea creepy creatures start to swim up to the surface. The world's oceans are basically still a mystery. Whatever unknown animals were lurking in its depths, they're all swimming around on the surface now. Huge squid, the size of a bus, appear out of nowhere and attack ships. That kraken myth's not sounding so crazy now. Oceanographers discover new species of animals every day. But hot water isn't the only thing forcing all these beings out of the darkness. There's not enough oxygen in the ocean now, as warm water has way less oxygen in it than cold. Following the monsters from the depths, hundreds of thousands of whales, dolphins, sharks, and ordinary fish swim to the surface. All the rich life of the underwater world floats close to the shores to get at that precious oxygen. People can't step foot on the beach anymore, at least not in the water. Who would dare to take a dip in the ocean if there's a chance of meeting a humongous squid or a hungry shark? Yikes! Crabs and turtles come ashore. The struggle for food begins amongst all sea creatures. People don't exactly just sit by doing nothing. Fishing goes into overdrive. Of course, fishing like that can't last forever. Hot water quickly evaporates on the surface of the oceans. The massive amount of water vapor turns into huge rain clouds. The wind drives the clouds inland, and epic rains begin to fall on cities and towns everywhere. It's been raining all day. A powerful river of water is flowing down the street outside your apartment, taking cars, mailboxes, and trash along for the ride. You're a glass-half-full kind of person, so surfing time! The next day, the rain continues, and the next one too. The ground floor of every building is underwater. It's like a new sewer system. That means the streets aren't just filled with rainwater, it's way nastier than that. Luckily, the rain's finally ending. The water's slowly receding, but there's another disaster ahead. Thanks to all that hot air caused by the warmer oceans, tornadoes, typhoons, and hurricanes become a daily nightmare. Strong winds blow off roofs and ground all air traffic. Windows don't stand a chance. People are mostly hiding in their homes, hoping that everything will end soon. But this is just the beginning. The hurricanes calm down. You can step out onto a deserted, wrecked street and notice a large shadow. It's getting bigger and bigger. You turn around and see a giant wall of water. A huge tsunami is bearing down on you. You run back inside and head for what's left of the roof. The gigantic glaciers of Antarctica have been melting because of the hot ocean. Water levels are rising all over the world. 
Huge tsunamis are everywhere, flooding coastal cities in every continent. The landscape of the planet is changing. Millions of years ago, almost all the world's deserts were actually at the bottom of seas and oceans. Now, it's happening again. Tsunamis are replaced again by new rains and hurricanes. Humanity begins to accept that life on Earth will never be the same. The biggest human migration in history is already underway. Flooded megacities are empty. Being able to swim becomes essential for survival. You and other people manage to survive on small bits of land, far enough from the water that hurricanes and tsunamis aren't that bad. Some settle in the mountains, which now just look like small islands surrounded by lifeless water. Life is slowly getting better. You get used to the endless downpours and frequent moves. But there's a new problem. More than half of the oxygen on the planet comes from seaweed and photoplankton. These organisms use the sun's rays to convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. Now, because of the hot water, they're all gone. Most of the forests and fields are flooded. The Earth's atmosphere is losing its enormous reserves of oxygen. It's getting hard for people to breathe. Oxygen is really crucial for your mind to work properly, not just your body. You move more slowly. You can't make smart decisions. You forget where you're going and why. Makes it kind of hard to solve all your huge problems. But the Earth is awesome at adapting. Pretty soon, the planet's ecosystem starts to get back in balance. The water in the oceans is still hot, but not everywhere. In some parts of the world, new seas have formed. Thanks to the melting glaciers, the water in these seas is nice and cold, and seaweed reappears. The air gets filled back up with oxygen, and you take your first deep breath in ages. Ah, <sighs> But the endless rains keep coming. And it's not just the ocean getting hotter, it's also the atmosphere. Those life-saving new seas start evaporating. There are completely lifeless spots on every continent, full of hot water and hot air. But people aren't running out of water. There's a steady supply from the melted glaciers, which are mostly not salty, so score! In place of Antarctica, there's now a freshwater fifth ocean. Or is it a sixth ocean? I can never remember. Marine life adapts to the new conditions. Pretty soon, there are fish everywhere. Now people have access to nutritious fish and algae. Some people don't want to bother with the constant flooding and just decide to live on the water all year round. They build large cruisers, complete with apartments, schools, gyms, restaurants, shops, and a whole lot of sushi. You decide to go on a trip around the world, and now's the best time to do it. You can actually sail over flooded cities. Sometimes you can even see the tips of skyscrapers sticking out through the water. More and more people decide to spend their lives wandering the oceans. The cruisers get bigger and bigger. Then, people start combining ships to create enormous floating cities. There's a rush for the new tech that can help us live underwater. Half of humanity ends up living under the sea. But there are still epic problems. Scientists need to get in gear and figure out how to stop the oceans from overheating. It's even starting to boil in some places. That means, in the future, water reserves will evaporate and the oceans slowly dry up. Engineers create huge cooling filters and install them all over the planet. It's not going to fix everything, but it'll make enough cool water for us to survive. Fast forward a thousand years, and some oceans are bone dry. That means new continents. The nonstop rains almost stop. Whatever cracks opened up that heated up the oceans have sealed themselves back up. The planet survived, but it's got a serious makeover. In some places, the ocean floor has been transformed into cities, farms, and forests. Where there's still water, the hot new pastime is underwater excursions. Want to swim through Times Square or take a scuba selfie by the clock on Big Ben? Hey, go for it! <laughs>